Uh, good morning. Um, being a relatively recent addition to the Canadian media buying community, um, I don't presume quite yet to have all the answers, despite what some people might think. Um, for that reason, oops. for that reason, I'm amending my presentation from what a buyer wants to what an advertiser needs. We buyers are the attendants to our clients' business requirements, so I asked some of Group M's clients what it is they need from the Canadian television industry. I told them it was an event on future TV, but talk as much or as little as you like about future TV, and talk about the future as it pertains to your business, and TV pertains to your business today. First and foremost, advertisers want bigger rating shows, higher quality content. 20 years ago, the average TV was 28 inches. It weighed 15 kilos. Um, it had no interactivity whatsoever other than a very poor remote control like this. Um, today, it's 40 inches. The device is HD. It's smart. But the ratings on that television set are a third of what they were 20 years ago. And the content coming into that box, not always, actually does the much improved device justice. Advertisers want fundamentally a better advertising, a better product on television to advertise around. They also want to get closer to the content that's on television. The best way to avoid ad skipping, over the top, PVRs, clutter, whatever the issue is within television, is to be integrated into that show. To do so, broadcasters actually need to make the content that they show on screen. Uh, and that's something that I will turn to in a moment. As a newcomer to the Canadian TV market, I was a little bit surprised that not all reporting of television currently in Canada is electronic and areas like posting can still be very manual. Uh, we're here to talk about the future of TV and advanced television today. In order for us to have serious plans to move ahead with advanced television technologies and richer data, we buyers on behalf of our advertisers need issues like electronic posting, e-contracts, etc. sorted once and for all and then for us to move forward into this bright future. Looking at the future of TV, advertisers want a little of the best of digital, targeting and accountability to appear in television. That ability to target ads to postal codes, new mothers, car buyers, etc. Um, that's what they're looking for. Some of the big digital players like Google or Facebook, uh, who I see here today, want to eat some of television's lunch or we're early in the morning, some of television's breakfast. I think television needs to improve its offering in order to, for this to be a bigger and wider conversation, to take on the likes of the television industry, to take on the likes of Facebook or Google, who are in some areas dominating the conversation. And lastly, if you ask advertisers what they want uh, from TV going forward, there's a resounding requirement for value. Not always something the TV industry, all of us in it, want to hear, but it's a dynamic in the media market that can't be ignored. The future of TV doesn't, advertisers don't want it to be a high cost future of television. I was set three points to address this morning. The first is why we need a healthy ad supported TV marketplace and what are the factors that threaten or encourage it in Canada. Coupled with what I have to ask advertisers and what they tell me they need, bigger ratings and the ability to close the content, I'm going to quick, take a very quick look at the state of content within Canada. According to most media commentators, we live in the golden age of television. Viewers eagerly await the return of blockbusters like Game of Thrones last Sunday. Um, these shows that return like Game of Thrones, they dominate all the other media, traditional media, whether it's newspapers or social media, when there's before or after the show. Television has never been better, but you know what I'm going to say next. There's only one problem with this so-called golden age of content. It's pretty much ad-free. Um, if you look at services like Netflix, Show Me, Crave, actually most of the content on them was originally funded by advertising. There's some headline shows like Game of Thrones, which is made specifically, which they market around, but most of the content on there was originally had viewers' messages on it. When it turns up on Netflix, Show Me, and Crave, it has no advertisers' messages. And I'm here on the behalf of our advertisers. In addition, services such as Netflix in Canada have absolutely no regulation. 
Um, I read that Melanie Jolie, this, I read this this weekend, the Minister of Culture is going to look at regulation regarding these and other services uh, alongside other areas of concern. Um, she needs to listen, she needs to do this quickly. She also needs to listen to the voice of advertisers. So what about the programmes we can actually advertise in? In French Canada, if we look at 2015's top rating shows, they're all made in Canada. Oh, and the ratings are massive. They're pretty much double what they would be in English Canada. This is pretty much what, well, this is pretty much what advertisers are looking for. They want co big rating content that they can get close to that content. A slightly different situation exists in the other 75% of the country. The highest rating content, the top 20 programs from last year, 15 out of the 20 are rented from the US, meaning advertisers can't get closer to that content. Plus, after it's run, it can migrate, as we've seen, to Netflix or wherever, where there are no future ad messages. If we judge the content on the numbers, just on the numbers, because I'm an ad buyer, um, as, I already, as I already mentioned, the ratings are much, much lower than in French Canada, and most worryingly, compared to French Canada, the ratings are declining year over year faster. I believe if the broadcasters produce more and better English Canadian content, particularly in peak time, the investment will pay off in higher ratings, and this content will slow the rate of decline and secure our future ad funded television environment. And there's evidence of this from all around the world. The second point I was asked to address, and I guess the point of this conference is what we want from broadcasters, content owners, platform operators, as marketing becomes increasingly data-driven. This is where we talk about how our clients better target their customers and a TV becomes more like, or a little bit more like, the rest of the digital universe that we all operate in. The traditional TV model of approving money is eight weeks out, broadcaster laying it down, buyer making a few adjustments based upon ratings coming in or not coming in, um, needs, to, um, needs to evolve. TV needs to become, and I tried not to use this term, but I kind of can't resist, but it needs to become a little bit more programmatic. And buyers and sellers need to be able to react faster to clients' business needs to result, and to results from earlier in the campaign. For lots and lots of advertisers, having a TV trading audience, which is half the Canadian population, is still sensible and most importantly cost effective, but for lots of advertisers it isn't. Some advertisers want to better single out groups of customers who are, who are in market or to minimise wastage for those TV viewers that will never ever purchase their product or service. Television as it evolves needs to be able to offer advertisers this for the, for the good of advertisers and for the health of television. The danger, though, is that we migrate from the single source currency of Numeris, which we have today. We add on Comscore. We then Google and Facebook add on their walled garden data. Then, in addition, new currencies and methodologies come from Bell, Chorus, Rogers, and everybody else. And we move from one TV currency, which serves us all very well, to 10. Obviously, transactionally, we need to find ways of doing business if we have richer data. But in terms of currency, we need to come together as an industry and sort this out. We know this is coming, and we have the opportunity to get this, because really, this advanced television hasn't really started, and we need to store it. We can get ahead of ourselves by sorting it out today. All of the infrastructure exists already in television. It was great to see Chorus last week announcing developments in this area. I think we all need to get going, get moving, and stop talking. The final question that I asked, was asked to cover is what happens to advertising spend if TV does become, television does become more advanced? And I suppose this is where you have to put your money where your mouth is. And I guess a lot of the broadcasters in particular in this room are working through the numbers and seeing if the investment, because it does require investment, does it make sense? We first of all have to acknowledge that this future world of richer data-driven television is not for every advertiser. If you have products that can be purchased by pretty much everybody in the population, and you have, you're an advertiser that's been advertising on TV for 50 or 60 years, and consequently have very, very low CPMs, there's no point in moving to this richer, more addressable future, because it costs more money. Um, 
my colleagues in Modi Media in the US and my colleagues in the UK have seen this with what's going on in those markets as well. So we have to bear in mind that this is going to apply to not every advertiser. But clearly there are some advertisers raring to go. This is our Group M forecast for TV ad revenue for this year um, for the Canadian marketplace and for online revenues. And this forecast that we've been predicting with TV revenue down three and digital up 11 has been what's been happening in the Canadian marketplace for the last three or four years. Money's been coming out of television and either it directly or indirectly has been going into digital. What I have done is I asked, we work very closely at Group M with Videology. They're a partner in this country and many other uh, regions as well in terms of in, in addressable TV. And I asked Videology, what, which TV markets are the most advanced in the world in terms of the future of television? These are the seven that they chose. Um, obviously, there are economic or cultural factors that influence TV revenues, or sports events, or elections, or all of those other things that happen. But there does appear to be a correlation between the offering of, of advanced television, more accountable television, and a growth in advertising revenue. Only the pesky Dutch has let, have let us down. Uh, and I'm told that's because their national team didn't qualify for the Euros football <laughs> tournament. <laughs> but there does appear to be a correlation between better, more advanced television and stemming the flow of ad dollars coming out of television. So I'm going to sum up. Advertisers want better content, the ability to integrate into that content and the ability to better target their customers today and in the future in real time and get better data. If this is available in a television market, TV advertising, TV advertising revenues appear to rise. Thanks. Um, Neil, I, I have to say, I think that was the most flirtatious presentation I've ever seen. Um, so, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a Who tough question. Who was I flirting with? Sure. You were flirting with the broadcasters, in my opinion. So what I want to say is, are you willing to give us a definitive answer? If Canadian broadcasters commission more Canadian English-speaking TV, and if they implement addressable advertising, are you going to increase the TV ad spend by, what was it, 7%, did we say? 7%? I, th uh, I think, yeah, I think that, I think, I do believe that would happen. Yeah, I don't believe that um, advertising spend would increase if there were, well, sorry, if, if TV was bigger as a medium, so therefore that's on the content side of things, yep. more advertising revenue will go into a bigger medium rather than into a medium that is in slight decline, so yes. Secondly, if television was able to be more addressable, richer data, uh, real time, money would come in from uh, digital. Yep to supplement television budgets, and, so I do believe new, that. new to TV advertisers as well, I assume. I think new to TV advertisers, well, I think it, de it depends on, sorry, we've seen it in other markets, yeah. new, to p new to TV advertisers have come in. Yeah. Luxury goods or you know, uh, regional advertisers or very micro advertisers, mm. so I think new, new money would come yeah. into television. I think actually on, on your advanced market set, uh, an example from the UK, I think yeah. this year, um, it hit five billion in advertising revenue for the first time, thanks to 800 new to TV advertisers. Guess who was the number one uh, advertiser out of those 800 new to TV advertisers who spent the most? Any any guesses? Facebook. So um, so the big question is, if Facebook advertising is so good, why the hell are they spending so much on TV? Why aren't they <laughs> Why aren't they advertising in Canada? More importantly. <laughs> Um, we have a question. Um, Justin, just bring your microphone. Um, so, Neil, you brought up a lot of good points. I'm intrigued sorry, sorry, by... In introduce yourself as well, just for those who uh, can't see you. Oh, I kind of want it to be anonymous. Oh. <laughs> Laura Bear, Think TV. Uh, we've met. Hi, Neil. Yeah. Um, so, I, I think you made a lot of good points. I'm intrigued by something you said at the beginning, which was... Uh, ratings aren't as high, advertisers want higher rated shows. Yep. What I find intriguing about that is, you know, in the olden days we had Cheers and MASH and lots of people watch those shows, but that means that lots of different people watch those shows. And in a world where everyone is obsessed with, and quite rightly so, about targeting, the fact that 
Canadians are still watching basically the same amount of television per week, but it's migrated to hundreds of different properties, um, is that not a good thing? Because your opportunity to target based on shows that over-index on women with kids, people with dogs, um, home renovation shows, uh, lots of Canadian home renovation shows, that that opportunity allows us to target right now and, op and optimize a, a TV buy. Is that not a good thing? Yeah, the ability to target discrete audiences is a good thing, but fundamentally, the power of television is to build quick, efficient reach as cost-effectively cost as possible. The best way to do that is to have bigger rating programs. Hence why the list that I showed you, you know, the Oscar, you know, there's a queue of advertisers wanting to go into the Oscars or the Super Bowl or those events. Um, those events become more valuable as TV becomes you know, as the average rating becomes smaller because it's more, you know, they, in terms of a pure cost efficiency per reach point, um, those programs are much more scarce than they were 20 years ago when Cheers or whatever was the top show. So then the, the flip side to that is why are people so enamored with YouTube stars that and they're the biggest YouTube star in Canada wouldn't get the same, you couldn't get the same number of impressions with the QP, QP die or whatever that. Yeah. A, a, a somewhat offensive guy's yeah. name is um, uh, <laughs> compared to like a property brothers you could get way more impressions of, so if if bigger ratings are what advertisers yeah, no, are after it's what's just, the obsession yeah. with the oh, smaller oh, obviously YouTube. there's yeah. a hierarchy of investment we spend our advertisers spend way more money on the property brothers than they spend on cutie pie or whoever he is um, but you know YouTube stars are a dynamic within the overall video marketplace and therefore if consumers of our products are going and to YouTube to talk, you know, and they relate to these stars more than they relate to the property brothers. It's advertisers, you know, wanting to, you know, to track down that audience and message that audience will follow where that audience goes to, even though if it's, you know, in absolute, you know, in terms of pure numbers, it's smaller. Okay, um, I, I think we're going to have to move on.